Hey everyone, this episode of John Locker Reviewed Your Profile is brought to you by the New England Journal of Medicine, the world's most widely read, cited, and influential general medical journal. This is John Locker Reviewed Your Profile. This episode's guest is VP, Group Supervisor, and DEI Lead at SSCG Media, Jasmine Asari. Day 752 of winter. Snowed again this past week. Going to snow some more the next. I've been in the snow so much lately, I feel like Sylvester Stallone training to fight the Russian in Rocky IV. But, as we talk, the sun is trying to peak out. It's 33 degrees, which is slightly above freezing. And four words linger in the back of my mind. Pitchers and catchers report. Yes, spring is coming sometime soon. In early February, the most famous groundhog in Pennsylvania predicted six more weeks of winter. He didn't say how awful they'd be, but in his defense, he's a groundhog. As I sit here typing this, I feel like Doogie Hauser writing his daily journal entry, a reference that certainly ages me. Then I start to think about what a ridiculous show that was. My brain really does tend to drift. But pitchers and catchers, that means spring is close, and an end to this hellish winter is in sight. I can soon break out my shades like H from CSI Miami and start working on my awful puns for the year. Nice profile. These intros are getting harder and harder to put together, if that isn't painfully obvious. But I'll keep this one short, as I have an awesome guest that you want to hear from. She is... Okay, Jasmine Asari is a seasoned media specialist, strategist that is, screwing up already here. The snow is completely throwing me off. Jasmine Asari, let me start over, is a seasoned media strategist with a wealth of experience, is vice president, group supervisor, and DEI lead at SSCG Media, where she's part of the senior leadership team, is extremely active with diversity, equality, and inclusion efforts, and is a damn fine human being. I'm excited to talk to Jasmine. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I, I'm excited to talk to you. Um, I feel weird, bad because it's been a while. We, it, Sales is interesting, as you know. You're kind of at the mercy of the account system that you work on. So since I've been with DG Connect for the last three years, I don't work on the accounts that you do. So I feel like it's been a while since we've actually gotten a chance to see each other and chat. Whereas in the past, you know, we've, we've worked so much together. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, I felt like we saw each other all the time and then. You exactly. Know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what? I feel like as we get older with kids, you, you blink and years just go by. And especially in crazy pandemics where it's Groundhog Day. Um, <laughs> you know, Who are you just, telling? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, so to that question, since it's been a while, how have you been? I'm good. I'm good. I've been. Um, extremely busy. Um, I, I, this past year has been like no other. Um, I know people like to say unprecedented, um, yeah. but there's no other word to describe it. And so, you know, it's been a period of transformation and growth for me. Um, and just really stepping into, um, a new role, as you sort of, you know, said in the intro um, with DE and I. So, um, so for me, it all sort of originated, you know, way before George Floyd. You know, I had been doing some work uh, with an ERG called OHG Voices, which okay. is centered around education and awareness of differences. Right. Yep. And so we had been doing a lot of programming since November 2018. But when the unfortunate incident happened with George Floyd last May, it definitely just thrust everything that we were doing into the spotlight. And so um, so it's been a very transformative year uh, in terms of having, you know, the attention and a platform that we really didn't have uh, as prominent as before. And we were starting to have some really courageous conversations. So, um, so transformative, I can say both personally and professionally. Um, I was definitely impacted by the, the pandemic um, in ways that, you know, were not typical, right? Um, you know, like everybody else, my kids started, you know, being educated at home. 
a yeah. um, hundred, you know, a hundred percent remote. They're still a hundred percent remote. Their schools really haven't opened. Wow. Um, so I still continue to juggle work and home. Wow. Um, but COVID, you know, has impacted me personally. Um, I've had uh, my husband, um, you know, have COVID at the beginning of the okay. pandemic. So as the kids were coming home to work remote, my husband was sick with COVID. And at the time, you know, we didn't know a lot about it. So, you know, he was quarantined. In addition to that, you know, I also had some, you know, personal losses as well too, um, you know, from COVID and from other things. Wow. Um, and, you know, this pandemic has really impacted people in a lot of different ways. And um, it's been good in the sense that people have been really compassionate and giving grace uh, when people are going through, you know, difficult things at home as well. Yeah, wow. So yeah, there's definitely a lot going on in the last year. Now, you know, I've been goofing around about this recently over the last month or so. This is the longest winter ever, but now on top of everything, let's throw in, you know, a month of snowstorms. How, mm -hmm. How's the weather up where you are? Yeah, so I am in Westchester County, New York. Um, okay. And yeah, the snowstorms have been like back to back to back. And so one of the releases we had during this pandemic was to get our kids out for walks, right? Uh -huh. And so as the temperature started to drop, the kids did not want to go outside. I mean, I have digital kids, as yeah. most people do, That's and awesome. they were more attached to their iPads and yeah. television screens than they were to going outside. So it's definitely been difficult, but I try to keep them busy. You know, I do a lot of online learning and programs because the libraries you know just have a plethora of programming um so do some of our you know institutions in terms of art um and museums so you know so i do a lot of things like that to keep them busy we've been doing a lot of board games <laughs> cards against humanity the kids edition <laughs> oh I didn't, know there, edition. I didn't know there was the such a thing edition. Wow. Um, and they, they generally like to do that. Um, oh. you know, I play a mean game of no. So, no. um, no. so we've been, you know, just really trying to embrace, um, the additional time that we have together. Um, so, you know, that's kind of how we've been passing the time in the snowstorms, but yeah, they are not, you know, the same kind of kids we were like, if it's, oh. I was outside, you know, like I wasn't inside you know, on the TV, yeah. I was throwing snowballs and sledding and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So well, that, that's the weird thing now. It's it's almost like there's not even snow days anymore. It's it's funny. We were talking as we got on before we started recording this today. Mm -hmm. It's actually snowing, and my kids, I'm shocked, went into school today. Usually, when there's snow in the forecast, they cancel it. But they went in and then I had to pick them up early. So today is kind of a half of a snow day. But for the most part now, with all the virtual learning, when kids have a snow day, it's not a oh, day off, go play. It's work from home, you know, uh, do the virtual learning. So, yeah, um, yeah, they've definitely... actually been doing that. I mean, they had one snow day, actual snow day. And then the other days they were like, they sent a note out. They said, no, 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 you actually have school. Yeah. And it's funny. I feel like I'm learning. I'm, I'm, well, first of all, having kids and helping them with homework, I'm learning stuff that I feel like I never knew to begin with. But there's also all these new crazy words like synchronous and asynchronous, uh, <laughs> which I, you know, wouldn't have known what the heck that was in, until kids learning from home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's chaotic. And my kids are definitely married to the iPads and all and playing Roblox and video games and chatting with their friends and stuff. And we try Among to keep us. Them. Among Us is oh. really big in my household. Oh, are you, are you the imposter? I mean, I, I don't know what that, I don't know what that means. I, don't know I, hear, <laughs> I always hear my, my daughter saying, don't kill me. Don't kill me. And I'm like, what are you playing? And they're like, oh, it's Among Us. It's cool. But, <laughs> but now I know that you have your kids playing Cards Against Humanity. Yeah. So that makes me feel uh, <laughs> family edition. <laughs> family edition. I'm gonna have to look into that because I didn't know there could be such a thing. I thought <laughs> the, the fun of Cards Against Humanity was the outrageousness of the uh, 
and the vulgarity of most of the answers. Well, but. now it's more about poopy and farting. And, oh, and kind of okay. I have two boys, so like you know that kind yeah. of humor is is pretty you know. Yeah, I have I have two girls, farting and boys. farting and poopy is still that never gets old. That'll be funny forever. So uh, yeah. I'll have to check that out. That's good. I, I've, I've I've got some takeaways from our call here already. <laughs> um, all right, so shifting gears, I have a odd question for you sure I've always, I've, I know you're from Staten Island right yes. that's where you were born oh, I've yeah. always I've always known you as being a New Yorker yes absolutely why in the, why in the world are you a Dallas Cowboys fan please explain yeah to me. so I can always explain that so I come from a military family okay and um I have a few family members that were stationed in Texas Killeen Texas Fort Hood to be specific Okay. And so when I was a child, I had spent some time down there. I spent about three years from the time I was like kindergarten to almost third grade okay. uh, down in Texas. And so there are two things that you don't miss while you're in Texas. It's particularly at that time. I'm about to show my age. Right. <laughs> so one, you don't miss Dallas, the TV show. Right. J.R. J.R. That's right. <laughs> and um, you do not miss Dallas Cowboy games. So those are two things that are absolute must-see TV when you live in Texas. Yep. And so from that time period on, you know, I was definitely vested in the Dallas Cowboys. Not only that, when I went to college, um, I met my husband, and guess what fan he is? Okay, very nice. So that works. I asked him, I said, well, at least I have an excuse. I lived in Texas, and I have family in Texas, and I'm there at least once a year. So, you know, and he's yeah. like, well, oh, they're America's team. Come on, you know? Okay. You know? Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman, come uh, on, you know? All right, so. He's a cheerleader, so, you know. He well, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I like your answer a lot better than his. His is the, the answer that I'm, uh, drives me crazy. But anyway, either whether you were a Cowboys fan or a New York Giants fan, I was. We, no were still gonna, this house. we were still going to butt heads regardless because I'm a big Eagles guy. So I'm going to show you what I have right now. <laughs> I am sitting here with my Cowboys. Nice. Right nice. now. So I just have a, a painting. I just have a painting over my shoulder of when the Eagles won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Uh, my, my, well, favorite, my favorite joke is when they show, uh, it says uh, the – the Super Bowl highlights for uh, the last time Dallas won the Super Bowl, and they show like a VHS tape that's been that long. So anyway, I, I was my whole premise here is not to bust your chops about who you like, it, but that's a good answer. I, I I'm glad to I'm glad to hear that. And well, and well be, welcome. Sure that, it, that was your first championship, is that correct? First in the Super Bowl era, they did win <laughs> it in 1960, which was back when it was just called the NFL championship. So anyway, okay, so shifting gears since you're going to – well, actually, this is a, a segue. I, I like to try to keep things relevant. So we're talking football. Yes. One of the things that I do with this, whatever you call it, is obviously I look at your LinkedIn profile and, mm -hmm. you know, try to have some conversation from there. And obviously the stuff that people put on their profile is important to them. So speaking of football and the Eagles, I saw one of the um, – one of the things that you had on your profile was that you attended, which I'm assuming was virtual, mm -hmm. um, yep. uh, something called a, a conversations with um, cultural shifters. And the guy that was on it was Emmanuel Acho, who's a former Eagle. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that and how that was? Sure. Um, it was amazing. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with some of the work that he's been doing off the field, oh, but yeah. he's hosted a podcast series called Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. Yep. And, um, and it really was designed to allow the space for people to ask questions that they always wanted to know the answers to. Yep. And so how we, you know, I'm a big fan of it because, you know, I'm always interested to hear from other perspectives and other lived experiences. Sure. And so, you know, we started uh, viewing it within our agency. Um, okay. Yeah, as sort of a springboard to have those uncomfortable conversations. So okay. um, I forget what episode it was, but it was definitely one that, you know, allowed people the space to ask those questions and to have those uncomfortable conversations. So I really saw it as a springboard into, 
you know, how do we approach this um, in the workplace? Because historically, these are not topics, you know, that were commonly discussed. So, um, and, you know, from that, you know, I, I followed his podcast series. I read his recent book that he has, Uncomfortable Conversations. Um, with a black man. And then I saw that he was doing something on LinkedIn and I said, let me check it out. I just love his vibe. I love his energy. He's always upbeat, so positive. Um, and he seems like, you know, like he's really well read. Like he has studied the topic. Um, and um, I just wanted to hear more from him. You know, I just really like his energy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've liked him. I mean, I obviously I knew him from playing for the Eagles and yeah, I mean, he wasn't a superstar or anything, but he was more of a role player. And then to see him kind of get a broadcasting career after the fact, and then, you know, all the other stuff that he's doing, it's, it's very impressive. So yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know him from the football. So, you know, I don't yeah, it's, yeah, you know what, I mean, the, the key is that we all know, him. it doesn't matter how we know him, why we know, yeah. him. we yeah. all know him. Um, so back to your, your profile and, you know, there's a lot of things that I want to talk about, but I definitely want to, um, you know, give a little shout out and a, some love and a plug to SSCG It uh, you know, looking at your resume, you know, you've had some stops along the way until it seems like you found your home with SSCG. Um, you've been there how long now? To, to uh, about almost, 12 and a half years, almost 12 and a half, 12 and a half years. Right? Mm -hmm. so what is it, what's so great about SSCG that, that you've stayed there for, uh, you know, all that time? Yeah, I mean, I think it always goes back to the people that you work with. Um, and it goes back to the passion that people have for their careers. Um, I, I love to think that they really are, you know, or we are innovators in the space. Um, and we are pros when it comes to client service. We're pros when it comes to innovation, pushing the boundaries, being leaders in the space. Um, I, I should confess that I am a boomeranger. So I, you know, was with CDM proper gotcha. in the late 90s um, and then came back. And this is actually my second stint with okay. SSDG Media. So that kind of gives you sort of you know, the flavor of, you know, why I'm there. I, I, I started out with people like Juliet Lee and people like Debbie Renner, like, yeah. you know, I was there with them back then and, you know, just have maintained those relationships over the years. And, you know, uh, it was, it was a no brainer when another opportunity came and, you know, Debbie said, you, do you want to come over? Do you want to interview? So I said, okay, cool. Yeah. And, and the rest is sort of history. I mean, I think one of the other things I can appreciate about SSCG is that they really allow you to lean into um, what you're good at and mm -hmm. what your passions are. And so, you know, I've seen them do that for other people um, within our team. And, and so, you know, when I started doing this work with the DEI, um, they allowed me the space to, to do so. They said, okay, we're going to take a portion of your time and you can officially kind of work on this stuff. So, um, so I, you know, that's the kind of stuff, that's the kind of leadership um, that really keeps people happy because they're able to not only do their jobs, you know, successfully, um, but also lean into some of their passions as well. Sure, sure. And that actually, that kind of segues into what I was going to talk about next was, you know, obviously your role goes well beyond just media. Um, and you mentioned the D E and I, um, there's also, and you, you kind of, you mentioned earlier, um, OHG voices, but there's yeah. other, there's other, uh, I don't know what you call them boards or, or whatever that you're also a part of mm -hmm. SSCG voices, the black collective. Can you yeah. tell me a little bit about those and, and what you're sure. doing? And them? so, um, so like I said, for the last two years, I have been working with OHG voices and we've been, you know, putting forth some really great conversations. Um, we call them brave space conversations. And, you know, that's to the entire network um, of Omnicom Health Group. So right. at any point, we could have six, 700 people on our um, broadcast. And one of the things that also came out of, you know, the brave spaces was the, you know, we started talking about representation within 
advertising and media specifically. And when it comes to representation, diverse representation, black representation, it's really low, right? And so how do we get more people um, into our industry, right? Or how do we support the people that are already there? Um, so one of the things that we did was, you know, I, I looked around um, and I met a, a young lady who was new to our network and she started putting together sort of a leadership team for black talent um, within OHG. Um, and this was after we did something called a, a group scoop, which is like a town hall. And okay. so we talked about our experiences as black leadership professionals within advertising. And from there, she approached us and said, why don't we form something? And we started networking around OHG and we saw that there was a lot of black talent there, but we just didn't know each other, sure. right? And so we formed something called the Black Collective, which okay. is designed to aid in the recruitment, retention and inclusion of black talent within the network. Um, you know, it's been really impressive because we've got garnered the attention of our executive leadership nice. and we came to them and said, these are the things that we're asking for in terms of helping to support talent within the network. Um, things like mentorship, sponsorship, um, things like buddy programs, um, career development programs, making sure that there's representation and nomination programs. So we've done a tremendous amount of work um, just to sort of amplify and elevate Black talent within the network. Um, and then we wanted to do something on an SSCG level, right? So how do we bring together diverse professionals within SSCG? So SSCG Voices was sort of born out out of that. Okay. And that is a space for people of diverse backgrounds to share, share our stories, share our experiences. Um, and that's where we sort of, you know, did the first one, which is, was about uncomfortable conversations, right? Gotcha. gotcha. Right. And we've talked about unconscious bias there. We've talked about um, anti-Blackness, you know, amongst diverse communities. Um, we've also, the latest one we did was on a book called Cast. Um, Isabel Wilkerson uh, did a publication that was based on, um, you know, sort of looking at uh, hierarchies within systems, right? And so, you know, she started with the Indian caste system that exists and how does that translate into the American caste system that we have, the sort of racial hierarchy that we have here. Um, so that was a brilliant conversation because we had people from India, we had people from other Asian communities, we had Black people in there. I mean, it was just very, a very interesting conversation. So, um, so SSCG Voices is really that safe space where people can have those conversations, those honest conversations and ask questions. Um, and I think through that, that's how we get to know a little bit more about our coworkers and understand, you know, sort of what their challenges are or their perspectives. So, you know, it's really just about fellowship and, and providing the space for people to have really courageous conversations. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, you're, you're doing a lot of, a lot of really good things. And that actually, my next question that I saw from your uh, profile was a few years back, you were uh, nominated for the Healthcare Marketers Exchange uh, Humanitarian Award. Um, what was that uh, nomination for? Yeah, so some of the other things, like I said, I, SSCG is just awesome in terms of like letting people lean into their passions. So, you know, it, hopefully it's clear by now in talking to me that I'm really passionate about giving back. Sure. And about, you know, sending that elevator down and bringing people up with me. Yep. And so part of, you know, what I was honored for with that humanitarian, you know, nomination was that we have something called Good Works Day, which is a volunteer day that we get every year um, as an employee. And so one of the things that I, I like to do is, you know, a little bit of team building so people can kind of get to know each other. Mm -hmm. And I said, why don't we use the Good Works Day to volunteer as a group, right? Okay. 
And so we did a couple of volunteer opportunities with City Harvest to help provide food for low income and disadvantaged communities. Okay. Um, so we did a couple of those together. We also volunteered with the Queens Farm. Um, we also volunteered at, um, what is it called? New York Common Pantry, um, you know, just, just to help right? Just yeah. to help the community. So why not use that day to not only get to know your coworkers, but also give back to the community. And so that was the kind of work that I was doing uh, back then, you know, right. um, and, you know, and I was surprised with the, the nomination. So wow. I did not see that coming. So. Well, it's definitely, definitely well-deserved. I mean, you've yeah. got a very robust resume here of just impressive, like I said in the intro, damn fine human being. That's always, oh, thank uh, you. that's the way I've always thought of you. Um, you know, I am I blink and I feel like, and I can actually see the clock in your background behind mm -hmm. you of keeping track of, I try to keep these things to be like 20 or so minutes, um, you know, so that's not too long that people, you know, uh, zone out on us. Um, so, I mean, I think I, that pretty much covered a lot of the stuff I wanted to talk about. Is there anything else that uh, that we didn't talk about that is important to you that you would want to get No, out I mean, I think it's, for me, it's the charge for everyone to be that individual, um, be that change that we want to see in the world. I mean, that's really the charge that I have for anyone who's viewing this. There are, there's no room for bystanders in this. Um, we all have to be active, participants uh, to make the world a better place, uh, a better workplace um, for all of our, you know, colleagues and friends. And I, and I notice um, you're very active on LinkedIn as well um, mm -hmm. with reposting and liking. Um, is that a forum that you think just continues to give you a voice? Absolutely. Um, you know, one of my passions um, outside of, you know, the, the DEI space is education, right? Um, I like to challenge people to understand how did we get here, right? So that's the question that we always have to ask. But sometimes we see the symptoms, um, you know, like for instance, when we're talking about, you know, trust when it comes to taking, let's say, the vaccine, right? The COVID vaccine that's coming out. Oh, yeah. And the news reports will always say, you know, black and brown communities are not, you know, lining up to take this vaccine. Mm -hmm. But you really have to understand the history of how did we get here, right? Mm -hmm. And there is a history of distrust because of the racism that exists within healthcare historically, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and how it sort of manifests to where we are now. Um, yeah. And there's a reason for that distrust. I mean, you have the Tuskegee experiment, right? That happened on young black men um, given the syphilis, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have Dr. Sims, who's called the father of you know, gynecology that experimented on slaves oh, and women without their consent, right? And so you have to think about how did we get here? Sure. And so in terms of LinkedIn, like how I'd like to use that platform or how I use my platform is to talk about how did we get here, sure. right? So we know what the symptom is, but we really need to understand like how did we get here in order to be able to solve for it? Like how do we build trust in those communities? Right. How do we get people to advocate for themselves, right? Um, we have a... Um, a, an effort called Black Health Now within the OHD network. And it's all about education around medical racism, around, um, you know, mortality rates, uh, Black, you know, maternity mortality rates. Um, we talk about weathering, you know, the fact that, you know, a lot of people of color will not go to the doctor because of that trust issue, right? So, um, so these are the issues that we're talking about with Black Health Now, um, and that's through T TBWA World Health, which is one of our sister agencies, yep. um, Wale Holloway, yep. uh, Brian Gaffin, you know, Walter yep. Gere, we're all integral in, in bringing Black Health Now out there and sort of educating. And it relates directly to what we do, right? Because we also have to think about when we're producing, 
you know, whether it's advertising, you know, advertising space or, you know, we're promoting our clients' brands, we have to think about what the implications are to different populations because it, it affects people differently, right? Yeah. And we also have to encourage, you know, more people of color to participate in clinical trials, right? So those are all things that are directly correlated to what we do. Wow. Well, like I said, I mean, you're doing amazing things. I go on LinkedIn every day and I see uh, you're educating me uh, through the stuff that you're liking and reposting. I'm learning more and more every day. And, um, you know, I could sit here and talk to you all day about all this stuff. Um, I know you said we had about a half hour and I think we're just about at that point. So um, this has been really awesome catching up. I'd love to be able to catch up again in person sometime soon. Fingers crossed that that's going to happen at some point. Um, but it was really great catching up with you, Jasmine. It really was. Well, thank you so much. It's an honor um, to have, you know, to have this space. So thank you so much for it. Well, you're, you're welcome. I, I told you when I reached out to you, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, as, as much as I can, have important voices in our industry. And you definitely uh, fit that bill. So thank you very much. It's been great, great chatting with you. And I will catch up with you sometime soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All, All right. right. Have a good Bye-bye. day. Bye. Okay. That's our episode. Until next time, keep updating those profiles.